Hello, this is Bob Keller. I'm the uh, lead in the development of the improviser, and a lot of the features that we're going to describe today have been developed with our student teams uh, over the years. <clears throat> so our focus today will be on recording and trading with uh, improviser in real time. Uh, improviser is a free open source software product that you can download. Uh, go to uh, improviser, just uh, use your search engine and type in impro, I-M-P-R-O dash visor, V-I-S-O-R, and you should uh, be led to our, our homepage, and then you can go from there to the download site. So uh, I've already opened Improviser on my Mac laptop here, and we're going to be uh, <clears throat> running our sounds through, creating our sounds with the uh, PX5S, which is a Casio keyboard uh, connected to a couple of uh, studio monitors, which are uh, out of view at the moment. Uh, you could also use the sound system on your computer or use a variety of different products such as Contact uh, to produce different kinds of sounds, all of which are driven by the MIDI uh, Musical in Instrument Digital Interface Protocol. <clears throat> so first thing is we'll, uh, we have a tune here which is Autumn Leaves. It's in G minor and we're going to just play the some of the background so you can hear that improviser will generate just from the chord uh, changes, it will generate the, the backing track. So we have bass, drums, and piano. So one way to enter melodies <clears throat> would be to use what is called step input. And in that case, uh, you enter one note at a time and at each point it will advance to the next slot. So we'll go. That's probably the most accurate way to get melody exactly as you wish. But if you wanted to capture in real time instead, so we can turn off step input and press the red button and we'll, we'll be able to capture uh, what is played on the keyboard in, in real time along with the backing track. So let's try. to use it. <clears throat> you can erase that and now we'll go to what we call active trading mode which is one of the improvisational modes that's available. So we open the active trading menu and that gives us a number of options. The idea of trading is we're going to be uh, the player is going to play some number of bars and then the program will respond with a comparable number of bars trade back and forth and that nature. We can select who's going to go first so I have user going first in this case and we're going to have a count in so that we can understand the tempo before we start playing and we'll set their trading to uh, to four bars. So the first kind of trading that we're going to be doing is called repeat mode and it simply echoes the melody that the user has played. Even if that uh, echoing may be over wrong notes over the chord changes it's just going to literally echo it back and improvisers note coloration feature uh, will tell us if some of the notes are outside of the harmony and we can deal with those uh, uh, offline. So let's start with uh, repeat mode. repeat mode and you can see that although it's not necessarily perfect it's pretty close to what was played so there are sometimes variations uh, in the quantization from what you hear versus what you actually end up with. So the next mode is going to be repeat and rectify and the idea here is that the line will be very similar to what is played but rectification brings the line into uh, in harmonically correct with the harmony that's being played at the at the time. So here we go with trading fours with repeat and rectify.
see if I can find an example here where rectification took place. Uh, here you notice that here there's a F and here is the F sharp to indicate that over the G minor 6 9 chord F sharp would be a preferred tone over, instead, of, uh, instead of F. So that's an example of re what rectification does. The next mode is called modify and rectify. And this is kind of an academic mode in the sense that what it's going to do is take our melody and then it's going to perform composer-like transformations on the melody, such as inversion or retrograde inversion or some combination of those two. Not typically something the jazz player would do in real time, but uh, it's still nonetheless uh, interest in terms of providing some kind of variation from what is being played by the user. trade, you can see an example of retrograde uh, inversion. So this melody has essentially been reversed to get the response. And again, it's kind of a thing that would be of academic interest more than something that a, <clears throat> a real jazz performer would do. Next thing is to use the abstract melody. So abstract melody is something that cap captures the shape, the contour of the melodic line without uh, necessarily being exactly the same note. So for example, you could transpose it up a third or some, some amount, and again, it's going to fit with the, with the harmony, the result will, will fit. <clears throat> so you expect to see the lines to have roughly the same shape, but not necessarily in the same place. abstract melody has been reinstantiated at a different place in the, uh, in the pitch structure. Our next mode is called transformation mode, and here we're using uh, one of several possible transformational grammars to take our melodic line and to change it in some way, such as typically to make it more ornamented. ornamented. Also, it could also be used in reverse to make it less ornamented. <clears throat> and uh, we have a set of uh, transformational grammars that have been learned by improviser from solos of various musicians. So these grammars are named after the musicians themselves. This one happens to be the Bill Evans transformational grammar that we'll be using. some of the ornamentation that's going on and it provides a kind of a nice uh, relief from what the player has played and gives possibly give the player some additional ideas. So we go up to our transform menu here you can see some of the other examples of transformational grammars that are available all of which are most of which are named after uh, famous musicians whose solos we transcribe to get these these grammars. The next mode is grammar mode, and this is uh, closest to what we call uh, passive trading. So it's not actually going to be responding directly to the notes that the user plays, but rather it's going to generate its own according to another kind of grammar, which is called a generative grammar. 
And we also have a collection of those grammars, actually a bigger collection, available <clears throat> in the repertoire of improviser. Again, these have mostly been learned by uh, solos of, of these players, although they can also be constructed by hand. So in this case, we're going to be using the Keith Jarrett uh, grammar, and we're going to be trading, effectively trading. We'd like to think we're trading with Keith Jarrett. Of course, we're not truly doing that because this only represents one uh, transcription of a, of a Keith Jarrett, Jarrett solo. This is grammar mode. Responses don't seem to have any definite correlation with what the user plays, but that is that is better by design. And the last mode we're going to illustrate is called Chop and Memorize. And the idea here is that the program will memorize some of the things that the program the user has played and eventually play them back in the form of responses, but it won't be immediate, so it takes a while to build up uh, some notion of what the what the user is doing. And this is probably the most experimental of our modes right now and um, reflects the fact that the improviser is still in uh, continued development, although you can download this version right now from the web. kind of picking up on some of the things that had been played uh, earlier on in the tune. And if you let it go for more time, then uh, more of that sort of thing can happen. So that's those are the different modes that we have. Uh, we can also do things like trade different numbers of bars. We can trade twos, ones, one bar uh, at a time, or we can trade up 16, 32. Essentially, an arbitrary number of, of bars can be traded. Eventually, we'll add a feature where that number is varied or is triggered by what the user plays. But right now it's a, it's a set number that the user can specify. The other thing I want to show you now is um, what if we don't have a MIDI instrument at our disposal or suppose we want to use an acoustic instrument, what can we do in that case? So toward this end, we have a tool which is called the, the Pitch Tracker, which is able to convert uh, audio sounds into MIDI in close to real time and then that MIDI input can be put into improviser and it will respond as it's been doing with the MIDI instrument. First I have to change the MIDI instrument setting. These are the different possible settings for input and we're going to go to the IAC bus which is necessary to use this particular tool. <clears throat> I'm going to move this out of the way so that we're not distracted by the the sound and I'm going to get an acoustic instrument here which is the melodica. 
a little bit sticky keys, but hopefully it will serve the purpose. Let's go back to a different mode. Let's use the use transform mode again. <clears throat> and one issue with uh, using this in acoustic instrument is that the microphone on the laptop is also picking up the accompaniment. So hopefully the uh, <clears throat> the melody instrument is loud enough that it kind of overshadows what the accompaniment is doing. But even left at its own, it could possibly pick up some notes from the from the accompaniment itself. that even though I kind of messed up that second uh, line, the response uh, still comes out count fairly clean uh, thanks to the, the system being able to rectify the notes uh, as, they're, as they're being generated. Uh, so that's it for now. Thank you so much for listening. If you have questions, please feel free to email me at keller at hmc, that's harveymudcollege.edu. Uh, please go to our website, Improviser dot com or uh, use the uh, just use the search engine to find improviser with an or and you'll get to us thank you so much